Now I want you to remember that no one ever succeeded in business by being fair and friendly to the competition. They succeeded by making the other poor dumb bastard go out of business. Now all this stuff you hear about Americans not wanting to be entrepreneurs anymore is a lot of horse dung. Americans traditionally love the idea of being entrepreneurs. Start new businesses with a hundred ways to fail against all odds, yet they proceed with caution, but never fear. All real Americans love the sting of competition. When you were kids, you all admired the entrepreneur of the year, the millionaire that started out of his basement, or the guy that had a crazy idea and ended up a billionaire. Americans love a winner and will not tolerate a loser. Americans play to win all the time. I wouldn't give a hoot in hell for an entrepreneur who lost and laughed. That's why Americans have never lost and will never lose in business. Because the very thought of losing is hateful to Americans. Now business is a team. It eats, sleeps, fights as a team. All this individuality stuff is a bunch of crap. The biggest bastards who wrote all that individuality stuff for the Huffington Post don't know any more about real business than they do about fornicating. Now we have the finest facilities, technology and equipment, the best spirit and the best staff in the world. You know, I actually pity those poor bastards we're going up against. I really do. We're not going to just destroy the bastards. We're going to cut out their living guts and use them to grease the treads and cogs of our business machine. We're going to destroy our competitors by the bushel. If your competition's drowning, shove a hose down their throat. Now I know that some of you are wondering whether or not you'll fold under the enormous pressure and stress of being an entrepreneur. Don't worry about it. I assure you, you will all do what you need to do to survive. The competition is the enemy. Wade into them. Destroy their balance sheets. Hire away their staff. When you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, realizing that if you go out of business, your only alternative in life will be to go to work for someone else. Follow their orders and make them money? You'll know what to do. Now, there's another thing I want you to remember. Now, I don't want to get any emails, texts, or voice messages saying that we are holding on to our market share. We're not holding on to anything. Let the competition worry about that. We are advancing constantly, and we're not interested in holding on to anything except the competition. We're going to hold on to them by the nose, and we're going to kick them in the ass. We're going to kick the hell out of them all the time, and we're going to go through them like crap through a goose. Now, there's one thing that you people will be able to say when you get back home with your loved ones. And you may thank God for it. 30 years from now, when you're sitting around the fireside with your grandson or daughter on your knee, and they ask you, what was it like when you were a struggling, risk-taking entrepreneur just starting out in business? You won't have to say, well, I decided it'd be safer to drive a truck for a giant, faceless corporation. All right, you sons of bitches, you know how I feel. I will be proud to lead you wonderful entrepreneurs into the battle of business anytime, anywhere. That's all. <laughs>